In order to follow this tutorial, you should be running macOS 10.15 Catalina or newer. So now you can launch Xcode. Remember to install version 11 or newer in order to have this functionality. So first we're going to create a new project. And from here you can see that they're all from here you can see there's iOS, watchOS, tvOS, and one that looks like cross-platform. Although this is a cross-platform tutorial, don't click cross-platform. Go back to iOS and click single view app. From here, click Next, and now we need to give the project a name. We're going to call it UIKit Mac. Our new project is set up, and now we can see that the mouse is right by a very important checkbox, which we'll revisit in just a couple of minutes. So before we do that, let's actually put some things down on a canvas here. We'll go to the main storyboard. And on the main storyboard, we will add some widgets. Uh, these are UI kit elements that before Mac OS 10.15 Catalina were native only to the iPhone and iPad. However, now they work on a Mac. So to demonstrate it, we're going to put some things on there like a switch, a button, a slider, and a segmented control. Next, we're going to actually run the app on the iPhone simulator. So we're gonna run it on an iPhone 10R here, just so that you can actually see what it looks like were it to be running on an iPhone. As you can see here, the widgets boot up exactly as they would have on any iPhone simulator before macOS 10.15 Catalina. However, if we return back to Xcode, here is where it becomes very important. We're going to check that checkbox for Mac, and when we do that, we have to click Enable because there are some differences between the iPhone platform, the iPad platform, and the Mac platform. They're important to understand, but not necessary to explain in this video. So once we click Enable, the project is ready to go for Mac. There's just one more thing we need to do. When we click Run, we're going to see there's a code signing error. Code signing is how developers can protect their code as well as the finished product. And this makes sure that the user of the platform and the software on that platform know that it is from a genuine author. What we have to do is we actually have to set up a development team to code sign this. This is able to be configured by people who are enrolled in Apple's developer program. So after I've logged into the developer program, I can go back and run it on the Mac. And just like that, all the UI controls open up, very similar to how they did on the iPhone. They all move like they should, they slide like they should with great animations, and if we pull the iPhone simulator up next to this new Mac app, we can see in fact that all the buttons are in exactly the same place and they look exactly the same, with the one sole difference being that the Mac is running in dark mode and the iPhone is running in light mode. So we're going to go to Settings, General, and then we're going to be able to toggle back and forth between dark and light mode. You'll see here I click on Light, and immediately after clicking light, even with the fade transition, I'll move that over so you can see more, and back to dark, the UI controls automatically take on the new color palette that they should to represent the overall theme of the system. And so there it is. iOS apps and the relative controls running on the Mac with no changes required.